13 years ago I moved out to California and I was very nervous, scared. It was a culture shock. I didn't know if I would be accepted by the people here or if my interests would change. But it's something freeing about being able to relocate and survive. But one thing about being in a different environment is that you have no idea what is gonna happen or who you're gonna meet. What is it about chess? I know at first when I started playing, it just seemed like all of the older individuals inside the building, they just played it like their life was on the line. I remember they used to play, they like used to play for booty scoots. You know what I'm saying? Beyonce's, yeah. Like, what's that? <laughs> you know how people be sagging? So you have to pull your pants down to a sag to where your underwear, you still got your underwear on, but you gotta scoot. You gotta pull your, your heels and scoot. You playing for like 250 push-ups or like 15 booty scoops. Some people just like, man, I'll just do the booty scoop. Thinking that it ain't it ain't nothing. Oh. And then now your booty all scabbed up. You can't you can't sit down and boo-boo like you want at night. <laughs> when you gotta use the bathroom. Or like people play for Beyonce's, which is like, you know that, you know that dance that she that she did in that one video? She put her hands on the wall uh -huh. and she looked back yeah, and yeah, she kinda yeah. like be bouncing her booty. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> They made dudes play for that. They made themselves play for that. Ain't nobody make nobody do nothing. <laughs> <laughs> they just say, if you want to play me, if you lose, you got to do 15 Beyonce. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Dudes be like, but they want to play. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah, they want to yeah. try to beat an individual. And so that's what, at this table, that's what's on the line. At every chess game, there's something on the line. Bragging rights, push-ups, money. And this game of chess is no different. I've known Timothy for 18 months in four days. The reason why I know that is because Timothy keeps track of time differently. Now I mentioned we had something on the line in this game. We're both playing for the same reasons. I already knew I wasn't gonna win this game, but I wasn't sure that I wouldn't lose a friend. You know, when we first met, right? Mm -hmm. um, I actually didn't think we were gonna be this close. How close is that? like actual real friends. I thought this was like an acquaintance thing. I, di I didn't really expect it to manifest into anything legitimate. And I say that because not that I, I had anything against you, but when I, you know, when I heard that you were in prison for years, I definitely wanted to keep you at a safe distance, but still help, you know what I'm saying? Because, you know, that seems like the good, the good thing to do. Who do you think you would have been keeping yourself safe from? <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know. Um, well, it was more my family. That's right. You know what I'm saying? Like my kids, like yeah, I, I have three children and you know, I just didn't know. I didn't know like, you know, what was going to manifest. You know what I'm saying? When you, you know, you, I was already coming over for the life group, but then, you know what I'm saying? Like you started, like you were trusting me with throwing your kids up in the air. You know what I'm saying? Like mm -hmm. you didn't come up to me and be like, hey bro, mm-mm. <laughs> you're scaring them, man. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like, you just let me be me around them. You know what I'm saying? And so that's like, I think, I just don't think that you're, it was a selfish judgment. But since we're speaking on prison, and um, I kind of wanted to know what was your, <laughs> like, how did you end up there? I've lived a life of crime both in my mind and in real time And it seems sublime But that was my reality And I'd give this life of mine for three dimes The color and blue, the streets of the valley, yes it's true Trapped in an act of battle now wake up, young soldier. Timothy took me back to the house he grew up in. We walked the streets where he played as a child, and we passed the park he got put on in. As I discovered more about him and his upbringing, I'm realizing that we are only a choice or two away from one another. I started to wonder, do we really have much control over how we turn out, or are we mostly products of our environment? No one can save me. No one can save me. No one can save you. No one but 
the one who made you. How does it feel being right here? Oh man, it's crazy. I remember I took a picture, the police got it now though. I remember I took a picture right there when I was young, man, like maybe seven, six years old. I didn't realize it until I was younger, I mean, until I was older, but I was standing right where it said DVC, spray painted on the ground. It had no, it had no clue, you know what I'm saying, that I would end up affiliated with that to such a degree that I was. But yeah, I was looking through some flicks one time and I seen it on the ground, I'm like, what the heck? I was a little bitty puppy, man. Yeah, this is where I learned how to shoot my first hoops. I got into my first fight. I kissed my first girl. <laughs> This is where I got my first rock fight. I bust upside my head with a big old rock. Against who? A white boy. He just knew how to throw rocks. I didn't know how to throw rocks like that. <laughs> I thought I knew what I was doing because I knew how to throw a football. You gotta throw a rock a different way. It's a real life sandbox right here, bro. <laughs> it's one of them 1960s sandboxes, man. This look like the yard, if I can imagine, <laughs> bro. This looks like a prison. That's how they had us, man, at a young age, didn't even realize it. <laughs> it was almost like it was training. Yeah, that's how they was all developed. Straight monkey bars. Ain't it weird how they call them that? It is. Monkey bars. You know, this was, you were the leader of a gang in Oceanside, right? Like, something put you there like more more than one thing it was a series of events right. I think I would have to go all the way back to where I was like first introduced to like fear mm -hmm. and probably when I when I first when I was very first experienced some type of trauma and that's when my um, when my pops left um, no, poor, I'm not gonna bang my whole, I'm not gonna like blame my whole gangbang career on that one trauma because there was several, there were things that happened that were more, you know, hideous than that mm -hmm. to me, you know what I'm saying? But my dad leaving and saying he'll be back, the way he said it and the way that it all happened kind of like introduced me to, you know, a feeling I had never felt before. Like I felt uncomfortable with that because he had never pretty much said, you know, hey, I'm about to go to the store. Tell me what you want. Like it was always me just going with him, cause I something in, in, in something in me, like told me like he wasn't coming back. And so I think that knew, was just so a you fear. Knew your father wasn't coming back. I didn't fear did though. I felt that feeling, um, and I've identified it as fear now. Like just the fear of unknowing what was going to take place. I didn't want to feel that feeling no more. You know what I'm saying? And then you know I began to look for him in other ways, amongst other things that happened within my home, like you know my mom and her addiction. You know, my grandparents and them trying to adapt. Life just started changing inside my household. So I started kind of like, and it was always, always great, always joyful, always, at least from what I can see as a child. You know, once my sister and I began to really, really, like we were receiving what we once were in the house outside of the home, we just, we both, in one way or another, um, really began to grab a hold of anything that gave us attention and anything that made us feel loved or anything that made us feel a sense of purpose. What I had to do to keep myself from feeling that way was, had to do with hurting other people, unfortunately. I had like, when I met you, I was like, okay, here are yes. the rules. I'm not finna have this dude over my house. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, but you were talking about you wanted to come record and I'm like, dang. And it wasn't like, I'm just thinking about like, I had to see it from my wife's perspective. Yeah, and so I think in a real sense, I had a fear of the threat of your past. You know what I'm saying? Like everything that you been, you went through, I wore it like, how am I gonna get past this hurdle? Because I know it's a, I know it's a human being here. You know what I'm saying? When I look at my son's eyes, it's different. When I look at my daughter, and you know what I'm saying? Like we, we fresh and having a baby and all this stuff. And so, um, yeah, man, I, I guess I, I kind of have to apologize because of how I judged you in the beginning, and put up this wall that immediately was taken down because of like what God has allowed me to. But do you believe your judgment was selfish though? Like, I mean, cause that was a righteous judgment. Like you have a family, man. I just don't think that you're, it was a selfish judgment. I mean, I think anybody in their right mind would, you know, would just want to be careful check with what's being allowed 
around around their family, especially like their family. Their yeah, brother. yeah, but it was like just by just the fact that you're a black man, mm-hmm. and I'm having this like internal dilemma. Why do you think that is though? Too, like, why do you think we have that? Because <laughs> that's like common. Think, do you get nervous when you see another black man? Real talk. I, I'm gonna be honest. It's like it's not like a nervous like I'm scared of you. You know, it's so weird. It's like this weird, especially uh, like when I came home after being gone for so long, and I knew that I was coming home to a different type of ocean side. It kind of, you know, it makes me nervous to interact in some senses because it's like I look like I look, and you can say some. You can say, sometimes it's like say what's up to somebody, and they just look at you, and they don't say what's up back, and, it, and you don't know why. You know, and you begin to entertain insecurities like, damn, like, what well, I think I was telling you about one time I was running in the park and I ran past, you know, uh, you know, I ran past a bunch of people, but I ran past these two brothers and I ran past one and he just, I said, what's up? He just looked at me and looked right back down in his book. And I was like, okay, so approaching the next one, I was like apprehensive of even saying what's up. But right before I could even entertain the thought of saying, like, don't say what's up. Just keep pushing, bro, because you're going to throw your run off. He was like, what's up, homie? You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> and I was like, oh, what's up? You know what I'm saying? Threw my hand out there, pounded him, and kept it pushing. You know what I'm saying? Didn't know each other or nothing. What's interesting is that you ran past him. One dude said he didn't say anything. And he made you reluctant to say what's, what's up, up to, to the, the next. next. Yeah. But ultimately, you encouraged the next the next guy you ran into to, to be more excited to see the next brother, mm-hmm. who probably was still mm-hmm. ignorant. You know right. what I mean? Um, so the answer is check. The answer is uh, the answer is yes. Then you do you do feel some type of way sometimes when you run into other black men. I feel like fear is a choice, and it's funny because the same way I felt about Timothy after hearing about his past, people feel the same way about me just because of what I look like. I often wonder, after my oldest son was seen on billboards all across the world, he's adorable now, but sooner or later he's going to fit the description of someone who you're used to fearing. So what is the solution? Everyone has a right to be known, to be seen, and to be heard before they're judged. Because walking under the pressures of other people's assumptions of you makes you feel so alone. I've been walking the road on my own Wondering when this change going to come If there is no other way, still I'll go but I talked to God, he said I'm not alone I'm not alone After being out of prison for a little over a year, Timothy's life dramatically changed He used the skills he learned in prison to start his high-level cleaning company, Quality Touch, where they fight bacteria He's a part of a local community that support him He has mentors and mentees And he's expecting his first child by his fiance. Now I will call him a success But the people in the community have really won because not only have they earned a friend and a brother, they know the power of their community. And by you being the change in someone else's life, that someone can turn around and change yours. Be the change. But I talked to God, he said I'm not alone. Yesterday was his first day out of the penitentiary And for a quarter of a century he lived within the Mars He just wanna make it out the hard So he spit his low verse in a cypher to show he got bars